Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My wife's lies destroyed my family. Now I'm left picking up the pieces. I have been married to my wife, Christy, for quite a long time now. We have two children together, Robert and Diana. Robert is the oldest, and he was our only child for a while until my wife unexpectedly got pregnant with Diana years later. To be honest, both of us wanted only one child but we were grateful that God had blessed us with a second one. I love both my children equally, and I always worked hard to give them everything they ever wanted. When my wife and I had Robert, we were just two years into our marriage, and I was beyond excited to meet my little buddy. I still remember the day he was born. My hands were shaking as I held him in my arms for the first time. I cried tears of joy, realizing that he was my son. The first few months after giving birth, Christy was in and out of hospitals a lot because of her health issues, so I spent a lot of time taking care of Robert on my own. Whenever Christy was home, I wanted her to rest as much as possible, so I never burdened her with any childcare duties. Luckily for me, I own my own company, so I could do most of my meetings from home, which helped me be a full-time parent to my son while my wife recovered. Because Robert and I spent so much time together during his childhood, he was always close to me. I was there when he took his first steps and when he fell off his bike while out learning to ride. I taught him to play basketball, and we would spend every Sunday afternoon practicing or shooting hoops. He would snuggle up to me on the couch as we watched movies together every night. I knew he felt much closer to me than he was with Christy, since my wife would sometimes complain about it. Mind you, my son was never disrespectful to his mother, but he also never spent a lot of time with her. This was mostly her fault, because she never spent any one-on-one -on -one time with our son. We had learned from our previous mistakes and did not stress as much as we did when we had Robert. I know people say they don't care what gender their baby is, but having both a son and a daughter, I can say that my heart never felt so soft until Diana was born. As a father, when you hold your daughter for the first time, you feel like you can do anything for them from that moment onward. I felt like I could burn the whole world down just to keep my daughter warm if needed. I can honestly say that daughters can really change you as a man. With my son, I was more carefree. But with my daughter, I learned to be careful and felt possessive with her, as I did not want anyone to harm my baby girl. Both Christy and I were a little worried during our second pregnancy because we wanted Robert and Diana to get along, but there was an eight-and-a-half-year age gap between them, which can be significant. Luckily for us, things worked out. Robert was a wonderful older brother to Diana right from the start. He would lovingly hover next to her, just watching her sleep or playing with her when she was awake. My son was really attentive to his baby sister from the start, and I am proud to say that both my children have always been very close to each other. This is exactly what every parent wants, honestly. Nothing beats having your sibling as your best friend. Now that we've talked about my children, I would like to elaborate more on my marriage. Christy and I met when we were in college. I was a nerd, and as a child of immigrants I had clear goals in mind that I wanted to achieve after college. On the other hand, she came from an upper-middle-class family and let's just say she didn't have to worry about money. I met Christy for the first time at a party where she was blackout drunk and partying with her friends. She was beautiful, and I knew that she was way out of my league, so I didn't even bother striking up a conversation with her. However, the next time we met at a party, Christy approached me and asked me to dance with her. Being a nerdy kid, I didn't know any impressive moves, so we mostly just scuffled around and giggled. Christy was smart, confident, and an extrovert who had no qualms about expressing herself in front of an audience. Although she gave me a lot of signals to ask her out, I was still unsure about us. I have always been the sort of guy who doesn't date for fun, so I decided not to ask her out, as I knew it would be a waste of time for both of us. However, Christy isn't someone who can easily be ignored, and she never backs down. After the fourth or fifth time we met at a party, she finally confronted me about why I didn't want to go out with her. I told her the truth which she did not like at all. She told me I needed to loosen up and enjoy college life instead of wasting my days in the library. There was something about her that resonated with me. She made valid points about living life one day at a time. Recognizing our mutual attraction, I finally asked her out, and the rest is history. Christy and I have faced issues with her drinking problem, but we've never broken up. To be completely transparent for the sake of the story, my wife changes into a different person when she is completely drunk. Initially, with a few drinks, she remains her sweet self, but after five or six drinks, she becomes very nasty to the people around her. In college, people even called her Miss Jacqueline Hyde for fun 
because it was like she had a completely different personality. I remember the first time I saw her other side was when we were all at a bar for the first time. We had all turned 21 that year and wanted to celebrate at this cheap bar that offered 25% off drinks between 4 to 5 p.m. Everyone was having a good time. Christy got very drunk and went to the restroom to pee. On her way back, she bumped into a server who accidentally spilled drinks on her dress. We witnessed the entire incident, and I rushed over to help my girlfriend, but before I could even reach her, Christy started screaming and pulling the server's hair. I was stunned by the whole thing as I watched my girlfriend publicly embarrass herself by shouting cuss words at the poor server, who looked horrified and kept apologizing. In the end, the manager asked us to leave because Christy wouldn't stop causing a scene. I did my best to calm her down, but her friends kept blindly encouraging her and escalating the situation, even when she was clearly in the wrong. When the manager attempted to remove us, her friends refused to leave and started threatening him loudly. One of them even smashed a glass on the floor, which was scary. I quickly realized that if this continued, the manager would involve the police. I'd never been in trouble before and wasn't about to start that night. So I settled my and Christie's bills separately with the manager and got ready to leave. Despite my efforts to reason with Christy to leave with me, she insisted she was right and refused to leave until the server paid for her dry cleaning due to the spilled drink on her dress. Fortunately, I left in time because shortly afterward the police were called and the entire group was arrested. They had to call their parents to bail them out. Everyone was understandably upset with me for weaseling my way out of the situation. Some even texted me calling me disloyal and saying they didn't want to invite me to their parties anymore. Honestly, I was okay with that, because I didn't want to be associated with people who got into legal trouble. However, Christy was not happy with how things unfolded. She wanted me to apologize to her friends and kept insisting that we should support each other and stick together in such situations. I explained firmly that unlike her family, my parents wouldn't forgive such behavior. They would be furious if I ever needed them to bail me out of jail. Christy struggled to understand this because of her different upbringing. Eventually, she had to accept that I wasn't going to mend things with her friends, and if she wanted to spend time with them, I wouldn't be joining her. This is exactly what happened after that incident. I never showed any interest in hanging out with her friends and did not attend any of their parties even if Christy wanted me to come. Instead, I focused on working toward my goals and planning my career. Meanwhile, Christy and her friends continued to get into trouble with the law occasionally, but their parents had good lawyers, so nothing went on their official records. It was only after we graduated that Christy slowly realized that the same set of friends who liked to hang out the whole day were now too busy in their own lives and were drifting apart, wanting nothing to do with each other. I suppose this is a normal part of adulthood, but it was a harsh reality for her to swallow. Hence, when it was time for me to move away after securing a job in another city, she made the decision to move in with me. I never expected us to move in so soon after college, but Christy was insistent that she would be an ideal roommate. She told me that moving in with me would help her focus on finding a job and being more serious about her future. However, in the first six months of living together, it was a struggle for me to pay both our bills and rent, as she didn't contribute financially. I wanted someone who would also save for our future. While I was investing my money and saving for a house, she seemed to have no concrete plans for her financial future. However, I knew I couldn't push her to change. She needed to come to that realization on her own, so I kept quiet, no matter how extravagant her purchases became. I remember once on my birthday, I had saved enough money to buy a car for myself. It was a significant investment for me and I felt proud of what I had achieved. Christy was shocked to see that I had enough savings to buy a car and demanded to check my account. She couldn't believe how much money I had saved. I think seeing me make such a substantial purchase made her realize she needed to step up her financial game. She finally started talking to me about investing her money each month, which pleasantly surprised me. She stopped making unnecessary purchases and learned to save her paychecks every month. It was only after seeing this positive change in her that I finally decided to propose to her. At the time, I had a stable job, but my ultimate goal was to start my own business before we started a family. Hence, after our engagement, I left my job to start working on building my company. I'm really grateful that my wife stood by me during those challenging early days when I was working tirelessly to get my business off the ground. Christy and I got married only after I had successfully built the foundation of my business, 
as I wanted to ensure I could provide for her. Over the past 28 years, my business has expanded and grown significantly. I earn well. Thanks to my business, I have fulfilled my dream of being able to provide my parents with a comparable life. Christy was also able to leave her job to become a stay-at-home mother. I would say neither of us had any major issues in our relationship, or so I thought, until today. In our family, we never had any major fights. However, one night we had an incident that changed everything for us. You see, during this time, Robert was a teenager. And like any other teenager, he had his typical mood swings. He stopped hanging out with me like he usually did. Instead, he spent a lot of time with his friends or in his room listening to music. I felt sad that my little boy was growing, but I didn't mind and always reminded him that I was there for him whenever he needed me. On the other hand, my daughter, being eight years younger than him, was still a child and still needed me. Unlike my teenage son, Diana would rush to greet me as soon as I came home from work. I cherished the way her eyes would light up whenever she spotted me holding a teddy bear or flowers behind my back to surprise her. I don't know what issue she had with our son, but she never gave him any time of day. If they ever did talk, it was always just small talk. Hence, it did not come as a surprise to me when Robert started to rebel slowly. It began with him talking back to his mother but it escalated when he started sneaking out at night to drink with his friends. One night, he even took my car keys without permission and was caught by the police while driving under the influence. I was shocked to receive a call from the police in the middle of the night informing me about my son's situation. Fortunately, they decided to give him a warning since it was his first offense. I was furious and gave Robert a stern lecture about how he was jeopardizing his future. Robert, on the other hand, did not care and told me that he just wanted to be alone. I tried to encourage him to go to therapy, but he refused, telling me that he didn't need anybody's help. He continued to be defiant, talking back to us at home. We frequently received complaints from the school about his incomplete assignments and disciplinary issues. It was like he was becoming a completely different person altogether. Whenever I wanted to sit down and talk to him, he would dismiss me or stay quiet the whole time just to avoid any conversation. His behavior started to worry me a lot. And during this challenging period, I also had to travel extensively for work because I was in the process of expanding my business. One day it all came to a head when I returned home from one of my work trips to hear my wife and son screaming at each other. As I entered the kitchen, I found broken glasses and plates strewn across the floor. My son was facing my wife, yelling about how much he hated her. Instinctively, I positioned myself between them to protect my wife because I did not like the way my son was screaming at her. My son, upon seeing me, redirected his anger toward me, accusing me of being a coward and yelling at me for being a deadbeat father, which deeply shook me. I attempted to calm him down and ask my wife what had transpired, but he continued shouting, insisting that our marriage was a sham and accusing us of lying to him his entire life. Confusion clouded my thoughts as I struggled to comprehend what he was insinuating. My wife sternly intervened, reprimanding him for discussing our marriage and reminding him that he was too young to make such accusations. My son argued back that he was disgusted with us and did not want to live with us anymore. I was at a loss to understand what could have triggered such a reaction, but he refused to explain himself. Frustrated by his behavior, I demanded that he apologize to his mother for the hurtful names he called her, but he scoffed at me and adamantly refused. He insisted he meant every word and expressed how sick he was of pretending that we were a perfect family. I tried to reason with him, reminding him that no family is flawless and that name calling wouldn't solve anything. However, he lashed out and started to blame me for everything, even claiming that I didn't deserve to have children. His words cut deep, and I was taken aback by what he had said. In a fit of anger, I did the unthinkable I slapped my son. I deeply regretted my actions the moment my hand connected with his cheek. The room fell silent as shock registered on everyone's faces. My son staggered back, clutching his cheek in disbelief while my wife gasped audibly, her eyes wide with horror. I had never laid a hand on my children before, and the realization of what I had done hit me like a ton of bricks. Guilt and shame flooded over me as I stepped back, unable to comprehend my own behavior. My son's stunned expression turned into a mix of anger and hurt, and I could see tears welling up in his eyes. Without a word, he ran upstairs, leaving my wife and me standing in stunned silence. She approached me and offered a half-hearted hug, murmuring that it would be okay and suggesting I apologize to him later. I stood there, my hand trembling, realizing the damage I had caused to our family. Initially, we hoped this move would be temporary, 
but Robert eventually made it clear he had no intention of returning home after that incident. I did everything humanly possible to seek his forgiveness. I apologized daily, attempted conversations when visiting his grandparents' place, where he often locked himself in his room and sent countless texts pleading for communication. Despite my efforts, my son ceased all contact with me. Update. These past five years I've deeply missed my son and I think about him all the time. Despite no communication with me, he has maintained a steadfast relationship with our daughter. Diana sometimes updates me and my wife about our son, but mostly we avoid discussing his name because it's too painful. Diana knows about that fateful night and the incident where I slapped her brother. Although she was disappointed in me, she does understand the depth of my remorse for that action. Yesterday, on her birthday, Diana expressed her wish to spend the entire day with our son at the Adventure Park. I was genuinely happy for her and hoped that they would have a wonderful time together. When Diana returned home late that night, she appeared disturbed. While Christy had already fallen asleep, I stayed awake to ensure our daughter returned safely. I also hoped to catch sight of our son in case he accompanied her back. When I asked her about her day, Diana shook her head. Concerned, I inquired if something had happened to her. It was then that my daughter asked me if I knew the real reason why Robert had left that night. Confused, I asked her what she meant. But she told me that Robert misses me, even though he will never admit it, and that he had shared something troubling with her that she found hard to believe. I pressed her for details, but Diana suggested I should probably go through the emails my son had apparently sent me years ago. Initially, I believed my daughter might have misunderstood Robert because if he had ever sent me emails, I would have undoubtedly responded to them. Checking my Gmail, I found no emails from Robert. Puzzled. I wondered why he would tell Diana he had emailed me if he hadn't. I recalled having an old email address that I hadn't used in years which I had used to create my Facebook account. Although I hadn't used it in a long time, I thought it might be worth logging in to check for any emails from my son. Even though I had forgotten my password, I managed to recover my account successfully. Imagine my shock when I found several emails from my son sent over the years just waiting to be opened in my inbox. I began reading through the emails he had sent, and I soon realized that my son would send me an email every time he was having a difficult day. It brought tears to my eyes as I went through his messages. In his recent emails, he expressed his regret more and more about not opening up to me sooner about the real reason he left that night. In it, my son recounted the night he had argued with my wife. He described returning home from school to find her in bed with someone else. Naturally, he was furious and started to yell at her. In return, she threatened him, insisting he keep the secret to himself, warning him that revealing it could lead to our divorce. She also told him that I had supposedly been cheating on her during my work trips and that we had an open marriage. This revelation utterly disgusted our son, leading him to call me all those names, believing his mother's accusations were true. It wasn't until years later, when he started going to therapy, that he realized how his mother had clearly manipulated him. By staying connected with Diana, he gradually understood that our marriage was never open and that his mother had been the one cheating behind my back. He ended the email by expressing how he didn't have the courage to face me, knowing that he was the one who had walked out of the family and mistreated me for years. As I read his email, I felt a rush of shock and sadness. It was like a punch to the gut reading the truth my son had been holding on to all these years. I felt betrayed and angry, realizing that my wife had been cheating on me all these years, and I had absolutely no idea. My life feels like it has fallen apart. What should I do? Should I confront my wife about this, even though I don't have any proof? What if she denies it, especially since she rarely admits to any mistakes? Update. Hello everyone, it's been a week since I last updated. To quickly update you, I confronted my wife, pressing her for details despite her denials, until finally she broke down in tears and confessed everything. She admitted to having an affair years ago, during the time when Robert was a teenager, and recounted the same details that Robert had shared with me in the email. She confessed that she was afraid of losing me, so she made up the lie about us having an open marriage just to silence Robert. She went on to explain how she convinced our son to keep the secret, but he was furious at both of us, which led to that confrontation that night. She never revealed the man's identity to me, but honestly, I didn't care at that point. I couldn't believe that my wife had not only lied to our son, 
which cost me a relationship with him for all these years. But she also never confessed to me about her affair until I found out from my son's emails. During our argument, she also confessed that she never really liked our son because she had always wanted daughters. She added that this was perhaps another reason why she could never bond with him. After hearing this, I couldn't even look at her without seeing red. I had no doubts in my mind as I informed my wife that our marriage was over and asked her to move out immediately, despite her pleas for reconsideration. Diana seemed to already know about the affair, and after witnessing our fight, her suspicions were confirmed further. She was understandably furious with her mother and refused to talk to her. I also reached out to Robert during this week, seeking to clarify this matter further. At first, his responses were guarded, but as I broke down and expressed how much I missed him, he became emotional too. He admitted his regret for leaving home that night and said he wished he could turn back time and apologize to me instead. I feel terribly sorry for my son. I still can't believe how my wife manipulated the entire situation just to hide her affair. Both of my children agree with my decision to divorce my wife and want nothing to do with her. I finally understand why my wife never missed our son as much as I did all these years, and why she never tried to contact him after he moved out. Whenever I brought up that night, she would always blame me for slapping him and make me feel guilty for years. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.